So Dr. Scholz, there's a lot of different types of prostate cancer imaging out there. Can you kind of explain the best imaging that you think is on the market for localized prostate cancer? So I think for localized prostate cancer, you mean uh, scans that can look right at the prostate, and then the uh, patients that have the high-risk type of prostate cancer, they need scans that look around the body and make sure that nothing is spread uh, to the lymph nodes, to the bones. The uh, Right now what's available is different probably than what's best. We've talked in the past about PSMA PET scans, and these are sort of one-stop shopping scans. I'm expecting them to get FDA approved in the next six to 12 months perhaps, but uh, right now they are available on a clinical trial basis at some of the large universities like UCLA. And if you're gonna use one scan, that would be it because it can detect prostate cancer inside the prostate and outside the prostate. And it's a lot more accurate than anything we've ever had before. So it, I think, will become the de facto standard when it gets approved. And other than retaining uh, prostate MRIs and ultrasounds for getting really high resolution images of the gland itself, I think the PSMA PET scan will replace all the body scans, and, uh, and it will also be useful for information about whether people have cancer in their prostate. Resolution won't be quite as tight as an MRI or an ultrasound, but it will show if there's any cancer in the prostate. So it's, it's kind of gonna end the conversation, I think, these new scans. So do you think that future protocol, in order to get really tight on the prostate, but also see in the body that people would go for like a 3T or maybe a 5T MRI in the future or something like that, and a PSMA scan? Yes, actually, uh, Dan Margolis, who's spoken at our conference a few times, has uh, new equipment uh, that allows uh, them to do both an MRI of the prostate and a PSMA PET scan in one scan. And uh, so then you have really um, amazing uh, information because you get clear pictures of the gland and where the cancer may be. And then the PSMA PET scan tells you with 100% or 90% certainty, uh, is it prostate cancer or is it a shadow from something else? So the, uh, that will, uh, I don't know whether those scanners will become widely distributed and people just have both an MRI and a PSMA PET scan. But uh, the information when you put it together is, it's really fabulous and very accurate. Until we get to that point, we have Axamen. Now, can you speak to its accuracy? Um, I know that PSMA is you know, definitely a lot stronger, but in the meantime, a lot of people have access to Axamen currently. Yeah, so that's FDA approved. This is a scan, Axamen is a scan that is designed to um, detect lymph nodes uh, when they're at a smaller stage than what we could previously do with CT scans and MRIs. And that is a super important question. Is cancer getting outside the prostate? Lymph nodes are the first jumping off spot. Axman is a, um, was a real advance over the older CAT scans and MRIs that we had. Uh, it's not as precise or specific as PSMA PET, but it is better than what we had previously. So we do use Axman PET scans. Uh, the um, scans are a little tricky to read, and so it's good to go to a center that does uh, a certain number of these, that has experience, that knows how to interpret them but uh, they can certainly be useful uh, for detecting the early spread of prostate cancer of the lymph nodes, which is a super important question. So currently, I mean, I think that 3T MRI is the most common that I hear about when it comes to men calling our helpline and getting imaging. But they, when they Google different prostate cancer imaging, they hear about color Doppler, they hear about 1.5 MRI, and then they kind of get concerned about which is the best or what's the best for which circumstance. So out of those three, can you tell us what you think that context would be? So a 3T MRI is just a more powerful imaging tool than a 1.5T MRI. So uh, I'm concerned when centers are using 1.5T MRIs to do prostate imaging these days because we know we get better pictures with uh, 3T MRIs. So it's, uh, you know, getting quality images of the prostate isn't just having the right equipment, but you want to start with the right equipment. And uh, you do need good technicians, you need trained radiologists to read this information. Um, and it's, in terms of color Doppler, there, uh, there are only a few centers. Uh, my office does color Doppler, but they're just a handful around the country. Uh, the doctors that do it need to have a lot of experience and have a large volume and a lot of practice, and uh, they are 
uh, not as specific for or accurate as an MRI is, but they approach the accuracy. Uh, but it's a simple office procedure. It's easy to do targeted biopsies. Uh, so the usefulness of color Doppler has a lot to do with its uh, convenience uh, being available right in the doctor's office. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like more information, you can go ahead and visit our website at pcri.org. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. This will keep you updated on all of our prostate cancer videos and help share our videos across the YouTube platform. We hope you have a great week.